So we saw something amazing from October 7. Actually, we had a trip, we still it in Israel. And uh, I was one night in Tel Aviv. And well, it was like late at night and I was speaking with some Israeli people or stood it with them. And when Israeli told me, said, you know, this October 7 remind me that I'm not only Israeli, but I'm Jewish before. I'm Jewish first. And and by us, a lot of students that was in the university that for certain reason, in the in the past year, they didn't show up at Chabad or they did never call us to try to do something or come to our class or come to a Shabbat meal or to come to a lunch and learn that we have. We have uh, every day. Decide after October 7th that, that I'm a rabbi. Now I know that I'm Jewish, I want to come. Welcome to Ordinary People with Extraordinary Stories. I'm Chana Weisberg, host of this podcast. Joining me today, we have Rabbi Levi Maimon, who is coming, hi. Hi, who's coming all the way from France. So many of us are quite concerned about the situation in France. We're hearing a lot of alarming things. And I figured, let me ask Rabbi Maimon to join us and tell us a little about the situation there and what is going on. He is the director of Chabad on Campus in France. He is also the director of the French Shluchim office, and he is also the director of Chabad on Campus in Seikle. Rabbi Levi, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little, first of all, about yourself. So hi, hi everyone. Thank you for having me today. So I was born in New York, 1988. I had the chance to live by Nicaragua Nights for, for many years. And uh, we moved with, with my parents, Al Shlechis, in France, in a city called Montrouge. And um, so I grew up between France and then I studied in Yeshiva in Detroit, Michigan. And Baruch Hashem, I came back to establish 13 years ago Chabad on campus in France, especially, especially in Saclay, where we have all the top school, engineering school and um, business school. From most French presidents came out of this school and a lot of businessmen came out of this um, nice and top school in France. And thank God, right now we have a Chabad house serving over 250 students around the year with international students, students from all over the world. And uh, Baruch Hashem, we're coming every year to New York for Pegisha with Chabad and Campus International. Uh, so let's just, let's just explain to yes. people what a Pegisha is. A Pegisha is when students come to 772 Cran Heights to the Brooklyn section to get together and to experience what it is, a little flavor of the Hasidic community there. Correct. So at the time of the rabbi, it was all every year, it was at a certain time in the year where it was my accounting with the rabbi, students from all over the world came to the rabbi. At the time it was maybe 40, 50 students who came all over to meet with the rabbi and be by in 70 for davening, singing, for Mergen. Now it's much bigger because right now it's 1,500 students from all over the world. Hmm. It's every time in, in November, we have the chance to bring over between 50 to 80 students all the way from our university. And this has a great impact in our university. It's becoming like a big one big family. And everyone already today, I, right now we are in August, I got already a text today from one student who said, Rabbi, when is Pegisha this year? Wow. So people are really waiting they're really this big event to happen. They're really excited about that. That's incredible. So you, you said Suc- your university, and I might be mispronouncing it, Sakle. Is that correct? Correct. So yes, you, So you said that university is a very prominent university. You said, you know, a lot of very influential people came out of this university. Yes. So, so what? I think even the, C, the CEO of Best Buy came out of this, oh, really? this university. There, there are nice people around the world who came. Best Buy, HEC Paris. And become like very famous. Wow, wow! Now there, there was recently, um, you know, elections in France, and the elections results were very left wing. It was very not so promising for the Jewish community. What, what did, what did your community feel about this? So, actually, people were really expecting good re- result out of this election, and we're very sad because a lot of people were waiting for it. And what happened is that the French president. Macron decide to do another election and the left parties win the election. So at, as France, there's over 5,000 Jewish people who decide to make Aliyah. Tonight. So who, so they decide to sign up and they want to move to Israel. And actually a few, few hundred of them move already this week 
their peop- their image on the social media from like I think 150 per week that move in the last month to wow. Israel. Is is that as the result of the elections or that's from before the elections? Part of it, part, part of, of it. it. So you, yes, but now every year we ha- they have in center of Paris like it's it's like a a gathering for all everyone who wants to make Aliyah. And in general, you have between 500 to 700 people who want to show up. Hmm. Right now, they said they had they never had so many people that show up at this big evening for people who want to know information if their job is capable, in able to to work as a dentist, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever in Israel. Right. Or they they they're looking for information for schools or for any, for any city to where to move. So it was actually over a few few thousand people that came up and got some information in order that they're planning right now. They want to move in the future because of this election. Oh, wow. And what, why is that? Like, explain to us, what, what are people afraid of in France? Because this, uh, I guess, this left party that, that win the election, like in their program, in the top 10 things in the program, they said that they, they're going to recognize a Palestinian state, for example. Mm-hmm. Something that has nothing to do with France. Mm-hmm. French people, what do they care about what's going on there? But for them, it's, it's very important for them to put that the Palestinian state will be recognized by France if they win the election. Another thing is that um, a lot of people, a lot of members of their parties, they are not afraid to to to, to whatever maybe to to curse out Jewish people or to take public statement against the state of the, state, the city of Israel, the state of Israel, or to, when there's like of or even about the Jewish cause, they're really they're not defending. They're a lot of from October seven, they are I think three hundred percent more. Uh, anti-Semite action in France against Jews, and you have a lot of people, politics, who stand up with the Jews and they say we need to do something. We need to be in the side of the Jewish Jewish people, and this party not only they don't stand up with the Jewish people, but they, whatever, they're not doing anything about it. So mm. it's really sc- something scary that you know that the next whatever government will be people who they don't care about the Jewish people. Mm. So was there fear in the air? Like, are people afraid? Are Jewish people afraid there? Not not much because again these these certain is only certain people mm-hmm. and French in general I think that they love French people that love Jewish people mm-hmm. now a lot of French people when I'm walking in the street with a hat with a yarmulke with a with a kippah and tzitzit, people stop me right now I am in the French Alp um, where the Chabad Center organized like a like a seminar for. A lot of Jewish families, so there's a lot of French people or in vacation, and people stop us in the street and said, "We are studying with you. We are with you. We are with the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. We support Israel." So the people really support Israel. Now, this left party, one of the programs that they support, they're not supporting Israel, but they want to give more more money to people. They offer a lot of things that people like it, so that's mm-hmm. why people vote for them. Oh, I see. So it wasn't necessarily that people in France are anti-Semitic. It was just the correct the government. I see the the things that they were offering that people were attracted to. I exactly. see. What what about like anti-Semitic acts in France? Has that increased over the last like year or so? So a big amount. So let's say I'm not not physically, but on social media, we went. We have a lot of students who told us that. They just put an Israeli flag or they on, on their Facebook or the Instagram. They just put something about Israel that they are supporting Israel, and in their promotion in school, people decide not to be their friend anymore. Or like mm-hmm. the, or, or it was some reaction in, in people, some really bad comment on them. So, in physically, there's not much, but online, it went really crazy. A lot of people are really cursing at the Jewish people, not supporting Israel. Um, there's a lot of stickers all over Paris with something like whatever, kill the Jews or mm-hmm. murder the Jews with wow. stickers. Wow. These they in like on bus station and the subway. And uh so like, there's a lot of things like this that that people physically they don't want to hit maybe someone, or maybe there's certain times or yes, people few anti-Semitic acts that got physically healed, but most of them, let's say ninety-five percent of them, is really like people like cursing out in the street or they put stickers or online. People react against Jewish people, mm-hmm. but you're not afraid to walk in the street with your yarmulke. So no, as I said, um, many years ago, it was a. I had a friend, Rabbi Shemta from Uruguay, who worked through New York when I was in Yeshiva. He worked through 
Uruguay with his hat and yam, okay, and he wanted to see the reaction of people uh, in Uruguay. So then afterwards, he had someone took the idea and, and did it in New York City. And actually, it was really nice. People re was really nice. So I always had the idea to do it in Paris and walk through with my yamaka to see and to show people that there's not there's not many there's no problem here. And someone did it. Uh, try and still did it. And no, again, you could walk in Paris with a yamaka and a hat, like every big city in the world. Mm -hmm. It's always safe now for sure. Certain time at night between maybe I don't know one one a.m. to to seven p.m. If you're going in certain areas, it might be dangerous. But if you're going in in Paris, in the center of Paris, they, they, there's there's no, there's not many problems. Mm -hmm. I see. Interesting. And what? So you you started talking about on campus. How are students reacting to the fact that there are such anti-Semitic acts against them, even if it's just on social media? What is what has their reaction been? So we saw something amazing from October seven. So there's two part of it. The first part is that actually we had a trip. We stood it in Israel, and uh, I was one night in Tel Aviv, and whatever it was like late at night, and I was speaking with some Israeli people or a student with them, and when Israeli told me, said, you know, this October seven remind me that I'm not only Israeli but I'm Jewish before. Mm -hmm. I'm Jewish first, mm -hmm. and and by us a lot of students that was in the university that for certain reason in the in the past years they didn't show up at Chabad or they did never call us to try to do something or come to our class or come to a Shabbat meal or to come to a lunch and learn that we have we have uh, every day. Decide after October 7th that, that I'm a rabbi. Now I know that I'm Jewish, I want to come. Wow. And since October 7th, we have increased, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 percent. We don't, we don't have much. We have, we have only 250 students. But out of 250 students, maybe we had 20 or 30 new students hmm. who decided that they want to be here. And we had a trip to Israel in order to help uh, whatever agriculture, uh, whatever in the field, maybe help out people in Israel. So a lot of people came with us. So or we send or we raise some money in order to to send food for them. So we try to do some action. So this is first of all. Also, we had some uh, conference. People came to to speak to our students. What to answer to them? Because right now they're on campus and there are many many students. There's a lot of question. When was why this attack happened and, and who's right, who's wrong. So we had many, many talks in Chabad on campus. And um, and then after for sure we had a few classes extra. And uh, Baruch Hashem, now I think our students are really ready to comfort the and, uh, and they have enough response for the to in order to, to face other students. And for sure we had one or two incidents in one in on campus there is one day who like uh, six students decide to hang up a, a Palestinian flags so after 10 minutes we were in campus we came and uh, we spoke with them they were nice they decided to to take down the flag and so nothing major mm -hmm. but you have to be safe and you have to look through the future to make sure that they think it's fine Interesting. So in, in other universities, has there been more incidents? I mean, here in America, that was like the protests were crazy and the, the, the students protesting and, you know, at, at sometimes violent. What was, was it like that in other universities or not at all in, in Paris, in France? So for sure, yes. So in, in, in France, you have many cities with university. So exactly is one of the, again, one of the top universities. So students don't want to get involved with violence or with uh, people they come especially because they want to make a career they they want to go business in the big companies and they don't want to have a reputation that they mm -hmm. fight against something mm -hmm. but for sure in, in paris you have two main university where chabad is there is the name is one is sorbonne where i guess the, the, the rebbe mm -hmm. learned there uh, when he was in paris and the other one is Sciences po it's like a it's like a put is a, a university in order to learn for politics and so over there is like based on politics. So people, the whole day, they spend day talking about politics, what's going on in the world. So over there, for many days, not, not like America, nothing like America, hmm. nothing compared because we saw image and we were very scared for people in America. It was like Interesting. something. Yes, we were really scared. Actually, we had students from our university who was in exchange to Columbia, to, to LA, to, to Stanford, and whatever. They sent us some image. Thank God nothing happened like this in France. Hmm. But it was really scary for us as Chabana Kabbalists in France to see some crazy image 
from hundreds of people walking in the street in, in uh, and actually we have even one parent to or rather one couple who flew to to New York to Colombia to, to visit a kid and to they were there for a week to support them and like to have an Israeli flag in front of all, all, all the Palestinian people. So, but for sure in France, it was like for a few days, it was some issue and thank God the government took care of it. And after five, six days, it was fixed. How, how long ago was this? It was maybe two months ago. Two months ago. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah, because here in, here in, in France, university finished between May 15th to June 1st. Mm-hmm. So it was like it was to the end of the year, the mm-hmm. school year. Mm-hmm. Wow! Um, can you tell us about some of the programs that you do with your on, on campus for your students? For sure. So we have our two hundred and fifty students. We have our first activities. We have kasha lunch every day. So students come come from all of, every university. They could come between uh, eleven o'clock and and two thirty. They could have, they could eat lunch together. We have a class. They could and they, they meet up different students, and uh, we have this every day. Then we have classes. We have Sinai Scholar from Chabad Campus, amazing program. Then we have some Gemara classes, mm-hmm. Halacha, Jewish law classes. So this on this is on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then we have um, so then we have few trip through the year. So we as we spoke before about Pegisha. I think I, had, I have an amazing story that happened four years ago or five years ago. So Pekisha, as we spoke in the beginning, is like a trip to New York to see the rabbi. And uh, we have a lot of students. And when we launch, when we put a message on, the, on the, our WhatsApp group that the list, the, 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 we launching Pekisha, in three to four days, the list get very quick and we have 50 students. It's really something amazing by us. Wow. And, uh, and what, why four, is five that? Years ago, we, what, why do they like it so much? Why? Because first of all, we try to find donors who maybe finance part of the freight ticket, mm-hmm. so it's cheap for them to go. Mm-hmm. And also, it's a great experience to meet fifteen hundred students from all over the world. Sure. And uh, Chabad Kamis International doing an amazing job to get us everyone together in Kronites with a uh, whatever we're going to visit the, uh, the rabbi by the earl. We're going to seven seventy. We have dancing. We have um, we have an amazing avdala. We have taking a bus. We're touring Manhattan between Jewish students. Actually, 10 years ago, we took a bus and we had a girl named Hannah who was sitting on the bus. And on the left side of the bus, it was a group from Montreal. And, uh, and it was a, a Jewish boy named El Hanan. They met through this hour of the bus and today they're married. Oh, wow. <laughs> they just met on the, bu- they just <laughs> met on the bus from, from, from Kranites to Manhattan. It was enough, Baruch Hashem. Wow, amazing. <laughs> yes. So, and Quebec so and second... France is the same language, right? They both, yes, they both yes, French, exactly. Right? Wow. exactly. Now they're living now they're in, in France. In France, and wow. And then we have another, another story. For four or five years ago, it was two days before the trip. We had a student called Leonard. Leonard called us and said, Rabbi, I want to come. So I said, look. Well, 48 hours before the trip is very complicated. So what happened is that we find him a ticket. He came to the to the trip, but I never met really Leonard before. It was like very, uh, I just, we sent some texts, but I never met him. And when I came to New York, so it was Parashas Lech Lecha, and um, it was on Shabbat. And someone said, who never had an Aliyah? So Leonard raised his hand and said, I never had an Aliyah. So it was his Bar Mitzvah. And, and, on, and on Sunday, Aliyah is when you get called up to the Torah. Correct, correct. So, and on Sunday, all the group put some money together and we bought him a, a, a magnificent pair of twillin. Wow. And we had his bar mitzvah. So then we said, Rabbi, I never had a bris milah. Oh, wow. So I need a sign that I have to do it. So I said, no, no, we just read the Torah, Lech Lecha, where Abraham got his bris milah at 99 years old. What, wow. what do you expect? Wow. So the rest of the story is just, and the rest is just history, Baruch Hashem. He had a bris, moved to Israel, and now he's, a, he's in Israel much more, and he's a happy Jew. So how, how old was he when he had his first his bar mitzvah and his brit milah? He was 21. 21, wow, incredible. Wow, something else. So, yes. so you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, with all the activities that you're doing there in France, that there's now an increase, you know, like a, probably a 20% increase of students who are actually attending now. And I'm wondering why, why do you think that is? Like, why do you feel people feel that, that aren't afraid to come, but to the contrary are feeling that pull? 
Because today, when you have a Jewish name, it's already enough that people know that you're Jewish. And for a lot of people, if you're Jewish already, they connect you right away to Israel. And they think you're, you're whatever, you're, your family is there, or you, because you have a Jewish name. So they said, if I already have a sticker on myself, like a year, that mm-hmm. I'm Jewish, so let me go at least enjoy my Jerusalem and go to Chabad and do something. Hmm. So this is first of all. And second one is... Well, do they all have Jewish names though? Like are, do, are they all known so as... So some... Last, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm talking about last name actually. Ah, okay. But, uh, yeah, I'm talking about last name. But And, and the second of all is that right now that they know that there's something to do. I mean, you just can't let October 7 happen and don't mm-hmm. have any response. Don't, don't learn about Israel or don't learn about our heritage, the mm-hmm. Torah that we have. So right now, the only address is to come to Chabad and try to study and, and talk with us. And then, so the Jewish people became much more closer and they, it became one big family. Hmm. They, they would each one take up from the, to the other one. And actually we have a group. We had, right away, maybe like in November or whatever, we, it was one campus that had like a, like a graffiti, free Gaza or free Palestine or something like this. Graffiti. So one student, yeah, so he was like, one student put a picture so right away, after a few minutes, everyone showed up there. We took some paint and whatever we increased the graffiti that was that was it. So you like these people are really, they're willing to help and they are really willing to do something for the Jewish people. And they feel that this is their action. We have to do their job here. And uh, and God they, is going to help our, our brothers and sisters in Israel that they they will succeed and win this war. Wow, it's incredible. I mean, we're, we're hearing that so much from all all over. Like, uh, you know, I interviewed some of the campus Chabad uh, Shluchos here in America, and, you know, and you know that the protests here are, are terrible. And yet mm. it seemed like the same situation. There are more and more Jews who are participating in their programs and coming in. It seems like it's like awakening the Jewish soul. It's it's pretty incredible to see that. You Correct. Know. I, have, I have one... Uh, one day on Shabbat, six weeks ago, I had someone knocking on the door and he said, <clears throat> he doesn't have a Jewish last name. Her mother is Jewish, his mother is Jewish. So he said, I was, I, I, with all the image that I saw, I said, I have to do something. I, I, I went online and I find a new name. Can I come for the Shabbat service? Really? He never, he never missed one Shabbat. Wow. Since then. Wow. So, so whatever, for sure that there's always some light come out of the, a darkness. Right. So. Wow. That's incredible. Really incredible. What, what, what made you decide to go on Shlichot in, in, in France or anywhere? So my parents, um, was sent by, sent by the rabbi in 1993 or 1992 to a small city called Marouge. And thank you. They gave me a, a great education. They implicate their kids <coughs> in their activity. They not only did something, but as the rabbi's vision is that even a kid has the power to do something. Mm-hmm. And actually, when I was a, when I was ten years old, he was. I remember it as today. It was my father. My parents decided to have the first Torah ceremony in our city. So today is not like a ways that you have. Everyone has an application. They could. They know where to go. We live in a small city, and it was no. There was not ways twenty twenty years ago, twenty five years ago. So I invite my classmate on Shabbat. And after Shabbat, I said, let's do something fun. Well, let's do something. How can we help people <clears throat> to come to the Torah ceremony? So we had an idea to make some sign. And we wrote Torah ceremony, this direction. Mm-hmm. And we made 20 of them. And with our bikes, we went on night and we put them all over the city. And we were sure that it's going to help people to come because there's, there's no application. People had map uh, at the time to come to our city. And we made 20 signs where he said Torah ceremony with like, like the direction where to go. So the Torah ceremony was supposed to start at three o'clock. <clears throat> at two something, someone knocked on the door and said, I saw some sign all over, all over the, the street. What's going on? So my father said, look, we have a Torah ceremony in an, in an hour. So this guy was living, this guy lived next to the Chabaras when my parents lived maybe for 10, 12 years. Never knew that he was a synagogue next door. Hmm. And thank God that now he, it's a crazy story because he, be, he decided to come to Chabad. He became religious. He moved to Israel. He got married and he became a photographer. And a few weeks ago, 
one of our donors from Chabad and Campus decided to make a Torah ceremony in Israel. I'm coming to the Torah ceremony in Israel, and he's coming to, he was the photographer oh, for the wow. Torah ceremony in Israel. Wow. So Baruch Hashem, now he had children, and, and he's a, he has a big family, and he's, and actually he's volunteering every Friday at the hotel to put food into people, for tourists that come to, so this is an action from a small kid. What that a could story. Have an wow, what a yeah. story. So was yes. when you saw that, is that what you decided that you wanted you exactly. wanted to have that impact? Uh -huh. Yes. So when I saw that kids could could implicate and do something, so I decided I want to go on Shlechus. Then afterwards, I was in uh, I was for one year as a as a student. I was one year in Vancouver for in 2009 for Shlechus in the city. And one of the mission there that was that to try to see what's going on in the UBC University in Vancouver. So for one year. I went to UBC in Vancouver to see how can we create a Chabad house. And I was in with students. And then when I came back to Paris, France, it was something avid that I will enjoy Chabad on campus and try to do something here. Wow, incredible. How, how long have you been on, on campus there? So I was for a year. I was for a year in, uh, in, uh, so in Vancouver. You know, Vancouver is at the American border. So you have UBC in Bellingham, Washington. And then you have a, and then you have Vancouver. It was two universities. So as a Chabad student, we went for Shabbat for Shabbat one campus one day, then another campus. And till today, we have some students that we're in touch with them because we met them at their at, the, at this university maybe 15 years ago. So when I saw it, the the joy that and the smile that you could bring to a student mm. just by say Shabbat Shalom, just by speaking with them, I said this is what I want to do now. I want to enjoy Chabad on campus. The Rebbe's army in. The, on campus. Wow. And and I guess your wife was agreeable when you married your wife. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> she, she she also had that dream of going on, on campus Shlichus? So she had the dream to go on Shlichus, but Baruch Hashem, after, after we got married, I bring him to, to I bring, I bring her to, to, to our campus. Now, our campus is like, as I told you before, it's very high. Um, it's number one in Europe, but because it's like very, it's, it's, it's a polytechnic, it's like engineering, there's only 11% of girls in the university. Oh, wow. Wow. So, so, so wow. we have, we have some program for girls, not much because there's only 11% of girls. So there's maybe few girls, Jewish girls. So we have challah bakes and challah and Jewish classes for girls. And we have uh, some uh, trip for them too. Mm. And Baruch Hashem, mm. she's doing an amazing job. Interesting. Doing an amazing job together. And and are you including your children in your shluchas, just like you Correct. are? Correct. You are. For sure. We, we have our older son, Mendel. How old? Who is doing a ter he's, he's 13. How many children? Doing... Can I ask you how many children you have? Seven. Seven. Wow. So during the, during the COVID, man, my son, Mendel, we were home, so unable to go out. So he made a class. Every, every Friday, we made a video like two minute Torah classes for, for, for the parasha. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we start sending out, sending it to our people, to our students. And every week we had between maybe I don't know, eight to 10,000 people who was watching the Torah classes. So my son Mendel till his bar mitzvah and he, people asking questions and whatever people send, write him some letters. They had questions and what he, what he call, called him when he was walking in the street with me, like in Paris, people said, I, I saw your video this week. So. This is what the Rebbe, the Rebbe, actually, I'm, I'm directing a camp now. Mm -hmm. And I told the kids that the Rebbe, as a, the whole Lubavitch history, from all the seven Rebbeim, the Rebbe was the only one who gave so much for the kids. The Rebbe took time to give dime and, and money to the kids, dollars to the kids, kids for rally on, on, on Sukkot. The Rebbe was doing a rally just for the kids, like Ba Omer, just for the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, even at the Farm Ringen, you could see all, all, all on the Rebbe, he was kids. The Rebbe gave so much kayak, so much thing, um, strength. Strength, to, to, strength to the kids that that made the kid our future leader. And this is our job as parents to make sure that if we're giving enough strength to our kids, they will be the future leader of the Jewish people. Wow, beautiful. Um, are your children in, in a, do they have a Jewish school there near nearby? So we have a school and we drive, we drive like maybe like an hour and a half or an hour and 40 minutes to go to school every day. Every day. Wow. Least, yes. Each way. And at least each way. Each way. But, it, but we sing, we, we, whatever we, it's a, we, I have good time. I told my pe people who said, why well, don't put the kids next, like whatever, next door. So I said, this is my time with the kids. Mm -hmm. This is when I have time with the kids. I could talk with them. We could sing with them, speak about some Jewish stories and then, then. 
we enjoy the trip. You know what? They'll treasure it. They'll treasure it for life. Yes. That, those are the memories Correct. that they'll have of you taking for that. Sure. Wow. For incredible. Sure. Um, you know, you, you mentioned before that there's, there's a lot of, a lot of Jews in France who are going back to, who are making Aliyah to Israel um, because of the situation, especially because of the political situation right now. Did it, does it ever occur to you, you know, to actually leave and go to Israel to make Aliyah at any point, if things get worse, will you be going? So as the Rebbe teach us, as and the Rebbe sent us, and Shlech is the Rebbe sent us an emissary to, in our city, and the vision of the Rebbe was, if still there's, if there's one Jew here in the city, we must stay for him. Mm. And actually, uh, Rabbi Kotlarski, who passed away a few weeks ago, always said, if you, he, he always He, he brought, was the head of Merkaz, Merkaz Lanyane Chinech, he was the head of Chabad, yes. uh, the vice vice. Vice President, President to yes. the Shluchim. He, he took care of a lot of the uh, the particular needs of the Shluchim worldwide, really, and very involved with yeah, each and, and every individual. time. Yeah, and every time he, went, he spoke at the Kinnis Shluchim, the big gathering with all the Shluchim, he always brought the the, the rabbi's teaching that if these, if in the city you have a hundred Jews and you reach out ninety nine percent of it, you didn't have success because there's mm -hmm. still one Jew left in your city. So I'm sure that even if a lot of people will move to France, to Israel, there's going to be there's still going to be Jews still being in France. Not everyone, not 100 percent will go there, and if really everyone, so then we'll make sure that our shleches, our mission is really complete. So maybe, but as now, I don't think that everyone will move there. But thank God we have a lot of kosher stores, kosher restaurant, a lot of synagogue, schools, kindergarten. We have uh, camps. We have a lot of Jewish activities. These over 250 Chabad house all over France. Wow. These uh, over a thousand kosher restaurants all over France. So the community just growing and growing. So yes, for sure you have certain people who decide they want to go to Israel, maybe to feel more comfortable. But actually in France we are really comfortable, and there is this not big problem has the major people who want to make that there's really problem. People could live safe. They could have the mezuzah at the door. You could mm -hmm. walk in the street. And nothing. I never. I'm today 36, and I, I was no one. I got any bad or curse out. Someone tell me whatever you're a Jew or something, and I, I went to a lot of places. So never something happened. So as now, thank God, um, Chabad and the Jewish community in France is doing really well, and I think it's only going to continue. Hmm. Wow, incredible. Okay, thank you so much for joining us, Rabbi Levy. Any parting message you want people to know about France or about your shlichus or about the situation there? I just want to tell people that when they come to France to go visit Chabad in here in France, will be everyone will be really happy to to gather you to for a Shabbat meal or to to help you out with here and feel comfortable to work with a yarmulke, feel comfortable to work with the tzitzis and do your Shabbat dinner anywhere we could find. There's a lot of places we could do your Shabbat dinner in Paris. And if you, if you are going to be proud Jews, so it's going to be, have, it's going to have an impact all over the world. And I'm sure that we're going to be, we're going to have very, very soon the third better Mikdash with Mashiach. Beautiful. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for everything that you're doing there for the Jews of France, for your students, for, and for Jews worldwide, because like you said, yes. we, we all have an impact on one another. Thank, thank, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, I found that interview very interesting with Rabbi Levi Mamoun from France. It was interesting to hear, first of all, his own personal story of how he was so um, made alive with shlichas, how he was so inspired to be a shlich from really a young age, from what he saw in his own parents' home. And to he, he was inspired by that vision and the message of the Rebbe to actually impact another Jew and how we can all impact others. So much so that he says he wouldn't leave. He would make sure that the last Jew was out of France before he himself leaves. But I, I found it interesting even more to hear about the stories of the students on campus and students who are finding their Judaism now, specifically after October 7th, how Jews, and we're hearing this story over and over and over again from all the campus shluchos. If you haven't seen my previous interview with campus shluchos who are in um, all different parts of the United States, we're hearing this message that more and more students are something is igniting within them as they're 
being attacked on the outside for being Jews, whether it be physical physical acts that are attacking them or just people insulting them, they are coming together, the Pintala Jew, the Pintala Yid, the Pintala Neshama, the little spark of Judaism within them, the spark of who they are becomes ignited and they want more. And I found that quite incredible. If you enjoy listening to these interviews and this podcast of Jews all around the world and really incredible stories of people all around the world, please make sure that you are subscribed to Chabad.org forward slash extraordinary. Please also check us out on our podcast platforms. If you watch anything on a pod- podcast platform on Apple or Spotify, please check us out. It's Ordinary People, Extraordinary Stories. Give us a heart there. Give us a like there. Download our video, audio, listen to us when you're riding in the car or exercising or cooking, wherever it might be. Um, and of course, we really, really love to hear your your comments and your thoughts. I appreciate every single one of them. Uh, it's, it's so beautiful to hear how you've been impacted by these interviews or what part of these interviews has actually touched your soul. I thank you again for being part of this extraordinary community and for watching. And until the next time, thank you.